cosmological constant, or what has now become known as the Hubble constant, the, the, the application of cosmological rules to the intimate space of the body is what this is all about. Yeah, they, you will always end up finally with a cube. Mm -hmm. Like your, your dipping will always end up finally as a perfect Wrong. sphere. Yeah. Yeah. Sui Zhang Wo has been dipping a uh, paintbrush in, in paint every day, every day yeah. as, a, as, a, as a ritual. Before he begins work, he dips this. And now it weighs how much does it weigh? It's, uh, 30 kilos. 30 yeah. kilos yeah. and is the size of a head. Mm -hmm. The okay, color exactly. is always different or? Col color changes. I try to see, but oh. sometimes the shopping don't have the same <laughs> color. Yeah, we have to change. Yeah. Oh. I think the primary drive in the making of sculpture is to inscribe on an indifferent universe some, some indication that we were here. And it's a futile attempt, but it's what led to the making of the pyramids, the making of the Maui on Rapa Nui, the, the making of Stonehenge. We know that in the truth of, you know, geological time, our lives are as dust. We have consciousness and they have eternity or something close to what a rock has, the capability of enduring time longer than we do. And they wait for us. They wait for our feeling, our thought, our freedom of movement and our projection. And that's what all great, I think, I mean, sculpt, sculpture that calls to us, that appeals to us. I think the works in many ways are like nets or traps that are waiting for us to be caught in them, with them. We may say, well, wait away, boy. You're just um, you're living in a delusional universe. These are kind of boxes, exploding boxes. Um, so this is a 500 um, millimeter expansion of me standing with my uh, with my hands yeah, like this. And this one is quite Chinese, I think. This is like this is like one of the Ming, you know, the Ming tomb, uh, you know, of these of these, uh, yeah, the the scholar, you know, with his long sleeves. <laughs> But, um, but you have to imagine it's like a forest mm. and that you, you can walk through. Some are less expanded, mm. like this one, yeah. and it's five rows of 12 in this Renzo Piano building uh, for, made for, for Paul Clay. Have we got the things? Yeah, yeah. Oh, let's have a look. They're all in paragraphs. Oh, what? They're in. How do I open this? All oh, right. So this is the model. This is exciting. This is the model of the field oh, okay. of the sixty. Mm -hmm. okay. So we modelled ah. we modelled them in little chaps. This uh, ah. this so this is plaster. Plaster with, with super glue? Uh, yeah, it's got some kind of hard glue on it. I'm not sure what it is. Yeah. Are you coming up? Yeah. The space is unbelievable. 
I mean, it really is unbelievable. The scale range is crazy, isn't it? Is this true, this guy, or is he a bit big? He, I think he's about a third too big, isn't he? He's a metre ninety-five. Oh, is he? Yeah. I immediately want to do some, yeah. some chess moves here. I'm going to say you can't touch him, friend. They seem to be a uh, great. I'm so excited. I mean, this is going to be absolutely amazing, isn't it? I mean, in terms of, I mean, in a way, it's it's more extreme than I than I imagined because of these. Uh, I mean, the big ones are really extraordinary, it's aren't they? This creates a space, and then suddenly this one is very different. In this. So these are a few of our uh, new. So you have this opportunity of seeing it as a singular, in a way, whole thing, and then you can come in and move around it. You can feel the beginning little root hairs of possibility, you know, at the scan, at the computer, at the model stage. But hopefully, you know, it goes all the way through and then you then you kind of have your big moment as you you make the thing that you've been dreaming. Suddenly it's no longer an idea, it's a thing or a place and you you experience it yourself as a viewer. I mean, I think that whole issue of whether you want to have readable progressions or whether you want to have the... I, I, I prefer this where it's actually mixed. Mm -hmm. um, so here is the man with the erection. <laughs> <laughs> we had to do that just to have the full range of extensions. If you have arms out, arms up. Um, yeah, this is the arms out. Very, very exciting. I mean, I'm just trying to get a feel. The it's really you spend so much of your time, in a way, in a plotting. But then the real proof of the pudding is you've got to walk the walk. And uh, with something like this, it's, it's terrifying. You know, the Paul Clay Museum, I mean, you may think this is quite big, but they're twice as high. And this big arc of the ceiling, and nothing is square. Um, and I want to make this, it's got to be tight, it's got to be hard, it's got to be, you know, everything there is curved, even the planks in the floor are curved. And this has got to be tough and orthogonal and dark and hermetic and um, but I've got to get it right. don't feel very um, consistent, actually, but they are.
almost as soon as they've made, they take their place in the family of made things and they're not mine anymore. Actually, to be a real artist is quite a tough thing. I mean, I think it's not something that you decide at the age of six. I mean, you know, I... Uh, funny, I'm frightened of that word, success, in a sense, because I think it suggests a kind of um, contentment or uh, job well done, now I can get on my slippers and put the crumpets on or something. <laughs> and I don't, <laughs> I don't think that's the way it works. The first 10 years were very, very hard and very lonely. And I delight in the fact that I work in company and I'm no longer in ill-lit, damp, ex-industrial spaces. Um, and I rejoice in it. I just think it's absolutely the best thing that could have happened, that you know, I'm joined in my madness by others that seem happy to be infected by it. In a way, this is the light of the accusation of self-indulgent whatever, um, because I don't think that they would identify what we are doing as being to the greater glory of some individual called Anthony Gormley. And I, I feel immense privilege, gratitude, joy in you know, the, the, yeah, the life of this studio. It's, it's wonderful. I mean, I, you know, we, there isn't a family, but there is akin to the closeness that you feel with individuals and, and the same degree of, I hope, trust and care. We're here for such a short time. And in the interests of making a true testimony to what it feels like to be alive now at the beginning of the 21st century, I am trying to make a true account. Coming up here on BBC4 this evening, Lars Tharp goes in search of Hogarth's lost dog in just a moment. In Secret Knowledge, One Man and His Pug next. And then, could we survive a mega tsunami? Sobering stuff at nine.